Hi everyone, today we're going to be discussing the merits of doing a whip finish. It's going to be a how-to video. I'm going to go and demonstrate on the vice how to do a whip finish. But before we launch into that, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about why you would want to learn to whip finish in the first place. It's a good question. Arguably, you can finish a fly by throwing in a few half hitches, a gob of glue, and you're done. Job done. Yeah, that's a way of finishing a fly. It's not a very neat or efficient way of finishing a fly. It's also not as secure as doing a whip finish, be it with a tool or by hand. The advantage of doing a whip finish is it's a clean, repeatable, secure way of finishing a fly. And let's face it, every time we sit down at the vise, every fly we tie, we will reach a point where we need to finish and secure our work. So it's a pretty important thing. To begin with, I recommend using a tool like this Loon Ergo Whip Finisher or whichever whip finisher you have. It's an easier way to learn how to do a whip finish. And then down the track, if you decide you don't want to use a tool anymore and you want to learn to do it by hand, the big advantage of doing it by hand is not putting a tool down and picking a tool up. I've gone ahead and lashed the thickest thread I have available for demonstration purposes to the hook. So imagine we've just tied our fly, we've reached the point where we're getting ready to do a whip finish at the head of the fly. The first thing to do is to uncord our thread. So what do I mean by that? If there's twist in the thread, bring your bobbin up, let it sit. You can see it's spinning in a clockwise direction. So it's trying to unfurl. I'm, I'm going to help that along by giving it a good spin in the direction that it was trying to uncord. The well, reason we want to uncord our thread is it's going to make it a much smoother operation when we do our whip finish and go to pull it up. If that was corded, it'd be grabby and worst case scenario, your thread may snap. So pick up your whip finisher, release about a generous two inches of thread, 90 degrees to the hook, and bring the hook on the whip finisher down, hook it around that thread, and now we bring the bobbin, so bring that thread up and around that notch. So let's do that again. Two inches of thread roughly, hook the hook around the thread, come up and over and around that notch. And just release a little bit more thread. So this leg here is the stationary leg. It stays in place, it stays parallel. I see a lot of people that struggle to whip finish move both hands when they do the whip finish. Park this one below and parallel to the hook. The leg that's coming off the hook at 90 degrees, the more you maintain that 90 degree position, the better the whip finish is gonna be. So essentially that's the moving leg. It's gonna come up and over the stationary one and around the hook. Let's, let's go into a whip finish. So we're gonna go up and over, moderate tension, just enough to sort of keep that thread wrap in place because we want this to slide in the end. So we can come up and over, going into our second. Now I can add or remove thread by releasing it from the bobbin and pulling with my tying hand or pulling with the bobbin and taking it away. So keep it at 90 degrees, come up and over, another wrap, and then our final wrap and third wrap. And it's important to place these always in that sequence, traveling from the rear to the front of the eye. And I'm gonna bring this up so that you can see what's going on. Actually, I'm gonna take some thread away. So people were talking about the thread slipping out of this notch, if you saw my first video. It hasn't happened to me whilst I was doing the whip finish, but now you actually want that to slip out. See, I, I can't get that to slip out now, so I'm gonna feed some thread back. I'm gonna come up and let that slide out. It's important to do that under tension. And now I'm gonna pull that down. You can imagine if this thread was corded up now, it'd be a lot harder to do this operation. So you can see that that's happening nice and smoothly. I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the, to the hook. Now I'm going to talk about this hook being tapered to a point. The reason that's tapered to a point is so that we can release that nice and smoothly and under tension and slide that out. Before I go ahead and pull this up, I'm going to talk about the placement of those thread wraps. So you've, you've got one, two, 
three, travel into the eye of the hawk. That's really important. We've overbound the standing leg. So when we go to pull this up now, the maximum tension is gonna be on the last wrap being at the eye of the hook. And the least tension is gonna be on the first wrap furthest away from the eye. So that's gonna create that nice sort of teardrop shape that we want in our head. If we went in the reverse direction, all those thread wraps, wraps are gonna bunch up and pull up on themselves and they're not gonna be as secure and they're gonna be unsightly. To pull it up, always pull in the direction of the barb. So pull away from the eye. Don't hook yourself, just a firm, snug pull backwards. And you can see that that's created that beautiful teardrop shape. Let's do another one for good measure. So we're just gonna hook our hook around it on our whip finisher, come up and around that notch, and bring the stationary leg back along the hook. Now we're gonna come up and over with one wrap. Two wraps forward and the third wrap at the eye. Come up, release that notch, pull it all down, release it smoothly, and now go to pull it up. You can see that when I go to pull it up, it's gonna cinch down into that nice teardrop shape. There we have it, you've got a whip finish. Nice and simple, repeatable and secure.